I've had a few people ask for a little video rundown of my Ford Focus Dash simulator setup that I have. The uh, setup is currently made of a Thrustmaster TMX Pro steering wheel with the pedals, TH8A shifter. I have a 50 inch uh, Emerson TV. I have Panasonic uh, speakers mounted to both sides of the TV, a Denon receiver off to the right. Uh, system is running with an Xbox One. I do have an Xbox 360 hooked up as well. Of course, it's not working with the steering wheel. I have the surround sound speakers up above here on the left and the right. Total invested in the whole setup was maybe about $200. I had a buddy give me the dash when a project he was working on didn't uh, pan out. So he gave me the dash and the seats and I used those combined with uh, some parts I had left over from my car in order to make the whole setup. Um, on top of that, the TV was donated from a coworker who didn't need it anymore. The receiver and subwoofer that I have is set up, or excuse me, I was able to obtain free off of Facebook Marketplace. Somebody who had a renter at their house left it behind, wanted it gone, so I was lucky enough to get there in time. The speakers that I showed you on both sides of the TV, I think I got about $40 for all those. The stereo and gauges, I think I spent about $50 on that. Miscellaneous wood. So it's a very, very inexpensive setup that I have. And of course, I have been lucky to have people donate some parts or have some parts left over and make it. But here's a little quick rundown of how I have it set up and got it all to work. Here's how the setup looks from the side and behind. Using the sofa table, it was the perfect height for the dash to mount to. In order to get it to work, I literally just used a couple of 2x4 brackets that I made and bolted the dash to it so it stays in position. The TV sits on top of the table, butts against the wall, with the dash tucking up underneath it. Nothing moves underneath. I did have to add a wood bracket from the back of the table down to the front of the dash to give it a little bit of support so it doesn't move while you're using it. Of course I have the subwoofer for the surround sound system in the center there and the pedals down here. I did also create a dead pedal just out of a 2x4 bolted to the side and the back with the dead pedal bolted to it. Initially I did have the pedals uh, on top of the bottom of the table, but then I did cut out the table bottom and put the pedals on the floor to give it a little bit more realistic height compared to the rest of the setup. In order for the wheel to mount, I have a particle board screwed to the front of the table with kind of an L bracket well, I should say another piece of wood on top to support it in place. You can see it's notched out for the gauges to sit in there. The gauges sit in there. And of course they don't work, but they are in there. Then I had another L bracket on top and the bottom to support the wood going out for the steering wheel to bolt, excuse me, to clamp onto. So from the front, the wood comes out just the same width as the opening on the dash for the wheel to clamp onto. One thing I wanted to make sure when I made this is I didn't want to have to cut and widen the dash right here in order for the wheel to work. So the wood is the perfect width and the wheel butts up right against it. it does give it a really good feel as far as how far out the wheel is from the rest of the dash and it just clamps on there with the normal setup. I'm sure I could uh, bolt it on there, but this time I don't feel the reason to have to actually do that. I know there's a bracket you can buy in order to permanently bolt it on, but this works for now. As you probably saw previously, there's a couple of white spots on the side here. Just have a uh, power strip there if I ever want to plug anything in like a phone charger, because I even have a little clamp for my phone 
so I can have it in the car while I'm playing a racing game, kind of like you would a real car, I guess. On the right side of the dash is the receiver for the surround sound system and all the cables and the rest of the subwoofer. Nothing too fancy up underneath here, just have everything kind of bundled up and not too messy, but it is still a little bit of mess underneath there like it always seems to be. And as you can see, the uh, TV just tucks up underneath the dash and uh, you can see where I had to kind of cut away up underneath the dash in order for it to hit flush. And it's all covered by the airbag cover so you don't see any of that anyway. I took the airbag panel off so you can see where the two existing holes are I used to bolt the dash to the table in those in those locations as well. So you got the two bolts there and you have the brackets on both sides. So you have six different bolts all throughout the dash holding it to the table so it doesn't move at all during use. The seats are mounted to a separate framing than the rest of the dash setup. I did this so I could take the seats and the center console and just disconnect one cable from the shifter going to the dash. Once I do that, all I gotta do is slide the seats back and I can move them around anywhere else in the room to give myself some more floor space in case I have some guests come over or just want to sit back a little bit farther and watch a movie because it does work as a really nice kind of a drive-in movie setup in this room. Of course, when I'm done, the dash and the seats, they just butt back together, perfect lineup, just like that. And the seats, due to the weight of both seats being on the frame, don't move at all while you're using it. The framing setup for the seats, simply two by fours that go all the way across from left to right. I do have the driver's seat sitting one two by four higher than the passenger seat to give it a more realistic feeling with the height compared to the dash. In order to get the seats to mount, I did have to grind off the factory seat mounts that go on the car and the rails are just bolted straight to the two by fours in the front and the back. But since I have the rails on there, it's real easy for me to reach up underneath here, slide the seat all the way back, giving full adjustability like you can in a car. And on the driver's seat, it even has a crank adjustability and height as well, if I wanted to use that too. The seat backs, normally there is a bracket here in order to adjust the rake of the seat back. Of course, these seats are broken off, so I just use a 10 millimeter wrench to adjust that backwards so I can adjust the rake on the seats while I'm using it as well. The center console bolted as well to the framing with the shifter and the emergency brake in there as well. The shifter is the TH 8A Thrustmaster shifter. I wanted to use a factory Ford shift knob and not the knob that came with it. In order to get that to work, I cut off the top of my stock uh, shifter, tapped the bottom of it and screwed it on to the shifter that came from Thrustmaster. And then the shift knob from Ford goes onto that. So it gives pretty realistic feel whenever you're shifting through the gears. And let me take the boot up and you can see what it looks like up underneath. Just bolted to some wood framing on that center console. It doesn't move at all and gives a pretty good feel while you're using it. Put the boot on. It looks like a factory Ford shifter setup. When seated, you can see what it looks like from the driver's seat. Gauges are visible. Wish they worked, but uh, you have to figure out how to get the gauges to work with an Xbox One setup. The pedals down below works really good with the dead pedal and also using it for heel and towing. The stereo is currently not hooked up. 
I'm wanting to get this to work where I can use the volume knob here to adjust the volume of the stereo system. I do plan on uh, eventually getting my AC controls here set up with a couple of fans behind the vents here just so I can have some air blow out from them. I figured that'd be a nice little touch. Um, the center vents, however, I have modified back here. If I take them out, they pop right out. You can see I actually have the center channel speaker for the surround sound system right behind the center vents. These were cut away to allow the sound to come through unobstructed and they snap in and out, no problem. The glove box is nice because inside here I just keep the extra controllers, headset, remotes, batteries, the factory thrust master shift knob and so forth all inside there. Easy access right at my fingertips. And of course the uh, receiver that is down below. Inside the uh, ashtray I keep the wrench that I use to adjust the rake of the uh, seat backs if I want to adjust it. friend made it for me. Of course uh, you might know what band that wrench is copying uh, one of their designs from. And uh, of course I have a little mount here for my phone whenever I'm playing I can have it right there kind of like you'd have it in a real car. So it's a actually a real nice setup. Yes, you are off to the side from the TV, but I kind of think of it like, like a real car. You're not centered in the car. Well, I'm not centered in the simulator either, but works out really well.